Okay, hi there, Jeff back again with another Synoptic video. Uh, we're thinking synoptically this time about the impact of a higher minimum wage in the context of a developing, emerging economy, and the country I've chosen is Vietnam. So just recently, the, the Vietnamese government has announced that the minimum monthly wage, so that's not an hourly wage, but the monthly wage, will be raised to between 142 and 204 dollars, US dollars. I've converted there from their own currency which is the Vietnamese dong. Now, this will be the first minimum wage hike or increase in two years in Vietnam, which is a regional manufacturing powerhouse with a population just under 100 million. We're told that Vietnam is a labour-intensive hub for products such as garment and footwear. Of course, that's a major source of exports for Vietnam. Uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, forecasts that real GDP growth will be 6% in 2022. I think Vietnam was one of the relatively few countries that avoided recession in 2020 during the pandemic, with inflation expected to be 3.8%. And I'm just going to talk through some of the aspects of this question, evaluate the likely microeconomic and macroeconomic effects of a rise in minimum wage rates in countries such as Vietnam. So you don't necessarily have to use Vietnam as a context if you're given that stem. Of course, you may be given a particular country, in which case you have to draw more heavily on the extracts that are made available to them. And oftentimes the answers, the application is right, right there in the extracts. OK, so loads of things you could talk about. Uh, I'm not going to go through any diagrams here. You might want to work through one of my videos on minimum wages, labour demand and supply diagrams, all that kind of stuff. Very useful to put in analysis in the 25 marker. Whenever you're talking about individuals and firms and industries, then you are at a microeconomic level. So I'll talk here about the impact on individuals in the labour market, people in Vietnam, perhaps earning as well around the minimum wage, they have now potential for higher incomes from their jobs. In theory, this is going to lift their per capita incomes if they stay in work, reducing absolute poverty and giving households more financial resources to, to save, but also to spend. So they might be able to improve their nutrition, their education, access to healthcare, etc. So link the micro to a development outcome. It might also encourage more people to enter the formal labour market. Vietnam does have a dual economy, uh, something like 15% of, um, of the output comes from farming, but it employs about, well, maybe double that, 30% of the labour force. There's still a big informal economy in Vietnam. So a minimum wage might encourage more people to enter the formal economy, and it might also encourage an increased female labour market participation. So you could talk about the impact on individuals, most likely, I guess, if you get this kind of question, you'll be thinking about the impact on firms. Obviously, many Vietnamese firms operating perhaps at those kind of relatively low-skilled manufacturing sectors that might increase their wage costs, which, of course, is a variable cost if you pay by the hour or by the month. And that leads to a possible fall in profits and investment, and perhaps they may well contract employment. However, of course, a minimum wage might increase demand, so there'll be a demand-side effect which might counterbalance the increase in costs. You could widen the scope here and talk about the impact on competition within markets. It might be the case that smaller firms in Vietnam, for example, might be less able to absorb the increased minimum wage cost. They may shut down and leave the market. Perhaps in the example of textiles and garments, for example, leaving larger textile firms as multinational companies who have greater, deeper financial pockets with an increased market share. So in theory, it could lead to less competition. You decide what you want to talk about. On the macro side, probably easier, I guess. Most questions find it relatively easy to aggregate to a macro level. What about inflation? Well, the IMF is forecasting 3.8% inflation for Vietnam. That's not particularly high relative to other emerging Asian countries. But there's the risk that this will increase if you saw further, particularly if you get both cost push and demand pull inflation. So an increase in minimum wage could lead to higher costs. Aggregate supply shifts to the left, SRAS. Aggregate demand might shift, shift to the right, and that uh, could cause inflation. And don't forget, don't, don't be afraid of using ADAS analysis in your answer. Uh, I would probably focus on the kind of external effects, uh, exports and FDI. So as we're told, Vietnam is a, a regional manufacturing powerhouse. They do rely heavily on export-led growth in areas of comparative advantage, garments, footwear, and so on. Uh, and those, if unit labour costs go up as a result of an increase in the minimum wage, that might reduce their cost and price competitiveness. 
the possible worsening of the net trade balance, which would affect growth, already pretty healthy at 6%. And there could be maybe a fall in inward investment from TNCs. So transnational corporations might might decide uh, perhaps to move some investment to countries like Indonesia or Bangladesh or Cambodia. It depends on the relative costs and the costs of relocating. But there could be some reshoring of manufacturing out of Vietnam towards other neighbouring countries or countries in the region. Uh, capital tends to be quite footloose, doesn't it? And you tend to choose your manufacturing base in the countries where taxes and unit labour costs are lowest. The Vietnamese government, there'd be a fiscal side to this, of course. The Vietnamese government would have to pay the higher minimum wage, presumably, and that might increase their spending for public sector employees, which could risk an increase in the fiscal deficit. But on the other hand, if more people are working in the formal economy and earning more, higher per capita incomes might, might broaden the tax base from direct and indirect tax revenues. So again, in a 25 marker, choose one KA point and analyse and, and evaluate it. With a diagram, choose one macro aspect, analyse and evaluate. Don't try and spread the jam too thinly. Focus on micro, supported by micro evaluation, macro, supported by macro evaluation. And then, final reason judgment. Well, often we say, well, which of the effects might be most significant and why? On the micro side, we're told that Vietnam has many labour intensive uh, firms, so perhaps that's going to be quite significant in terms of their costs. But it also depends on what's happening to labour productivity. If productivity rises with higher wages, then the unit cost might not rise as much. But equally, it might accelerate the process towards capital labour substitution, the use of robotics and automation and things in manufacturing. On the macro side, um, minimum wage, potentially significant, minimum wage reduces uh, aggregate supply, which is inflationary, and, and aggregate demand. But on the other hand, it might increase productivity, so that would have a damping effect on inflation. A lot depends on the macro side, whether it's significant, on what happens, A, to minimum wages in other countries. So are countries like Indonesia, Cambodia and Bangladesh, are they introducing higher minimum wages than China? And also, of course, crucially, what happens to the exchange rate. So the Vietnamese dong is a managed floating currency and it might depreciate, in which case the export sector might be still able to compete even if they have to pay a higher minimum wage. Loads of scope for diagrams, loads of scope for thinking, reflecting synoptically, and I hope this short video has been a little use to you. If you have enjoyed it, if it's been useful, please press the like button. Stay safe, stay happy, stay curious. See you soon.